Taos, where I would like to welcome her. Her um, presentation is called Longing for a Superhero, Dreaming about a Hero and Longing for a Super in a Paradigm of Contemporary Art. Please, Taos. Dear friends, good afternoon. An emergency occurred. Unfortunately, Taos is not able to take part. She had to uh, leave before the session. She asked me. My name is a su Super Taos. I'm a superhero and I'm going to describe my slightly superheroic practices. I'm a superhero. I live in Dagestan. And maybe as a kind of an introduction, let's look at a video from this presentation, the first video. This video was recorded accidentally using a video recorder because most of my feats are unrecorded. But it's very uh, interesting to me that I become a Dagestan uh, celebrity. This is a photo from the RG home. Uh, magazine where I was portrayed. I'm interested in the work of my colleagues and I would like to talk about my colleagues, the uh, Dagestan superheroes. Sharvili, the lesbian superhero, was defeated when he left the ground, or Patimat Partu, who saved her nation from the Mongol invasion. But I think uh, the most um, important for me was my colleague from Iran, Super Sahrab. He's also a superhero, but he uses images connected with the popular culture and contemporary technologies and contemporary culture. Let's look at what he does. That's a portrait of him and video.
So Sorab uh, uses some uh, small gestures of resistance like Facebook or books on his shelf are books that are hard to get at in Iran. This is another hero of mine. His name is Edemir. This is a photo from 1979. He tried to fly near to Mahachkala using wings that his father built. Of course, he's a regular person. He's still alive. He has no superpowers, unlike me. But he had a dream, and I think it's very important. And now I'm going to quote Patimat Gamzatova, an art theorist, who described this work like this humans big dreams and small people's fantasies are connected and it's very important that such small people get rich and can realize those dreams next work galina konopatska cosmic mother 1971 video please A girl defeats a wolf. Now they call her the Red Riding Hood, but she had no basket with food, she had an axe. In this district, wolves are quite common. A woman describes a wolf attack previously. Uh, the woman was attending the farm animals. Uh, it was quite empty around. She had no way of summoning help, and so she decided to fight the wolf. This elderly woman had small chances, but she wanted to insert something into the wolf's mouth. And so she stopped the wolf in mid-jump and inserted her hand into the animal's throat. She used an axe then to smash the animal on its head. And in that way she killed the animal, although it was attacking her. And then she just went home. So you see, this is a prototype for me. Rather than the American superheroes or superheroines, the Wonder Woman and the Miss Fury. For me, the heroes or heroines that are sexy and they represent the state. If we look at her pants, we see that she is the state with the superpower. And for me, people like Sohrab are more important. He lampoons and introduces this American discourse into the Islamic world, but I don't deal with super evil, with super states, and my hero is deeply human, maybe like my language right now. So my image is a folkloric image without sexuality. It's kind of an everyday heroism. And a little bit about the context which I live in. These are clips from the Dagestan wedding journals, wedding magazines, and it tells us about how split the world of our culture is. We want both the uh, hairdo, the hijab, we want to be both a princess and a turban wearing a uh, woman of the East. And the best metaphor for me is a place in the city of Makachkala, is the Geraski Street. The first uh, shop there is called 
the girl in hijab in English with the uh, with the motto "Just cover yourself" in Russian, and there is a gap in these parts. And the second shop is the elite lingerie from Europe, which is called Butterfly. So we've got this gap all the way, and I think my superhero must be somewhere in between. But in between, there is a mobile phone shop, which is called Connect. Another important reference for me are the medals from the time of Shamil Imamate, when Dagestan, after a long war, became part of Russia. And one of the medal has an inscription, the one who thinks about con consequences is no hero. And now I'd like to tell you about another hero with whom I work. His name is Amar Hanabiev. He's a strong man. He can lift a huge stone block using only his teeth. Uh, he can have this block destroyed on his head. He bends nails and so please the video. No, это просто небольшой отрывок. So it's a short part um, of our work um, with sculptures, and these are the sculptures that uh, he is making. And he, it's all manual work. It's uh, uh, these um, uh, uh, works were done in the 60s. So that's Madlas, uh, um, part of uh, Grozny town, and then Angie, Angie uh, Shield. Uh, that's for the football team. So this is Hunzas. Uh, um, uh, uh, district and this is uh, his picture, Omar's picture, and he says hello from Dagestan and uh, Omar uh, prepared a small surprise for the Garage Museum and I'm going to bring it right now. So, Kate, so that's for you. Just to expand the conceptual geography of your collection, because we uh, talked about this earlier. You could turn on the video. So, this is the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Super Taos. <laughs>